The difference between an alpha and a beta is night and day. The alpha exudes an aura that makes them irresistible to women. But a beta, he tries hard but to absolutely no avail. Now let me tell you something most don't tell you. Being an alpha or a beta is not congenital. It's not a code in your genes which literally makes you who you are. Rather, it's more so conditioning. It depends on the surroundings you grew up in, the company you had around you, the things which directly influenced you and your internal value system. Those are the things which make you either high or low value. Now, if we were speaking about your height, there's no changing that. Once a short king, always a short king. Much love to my short brothers out there. It's never over for you. Don't ever trip on it. But anyway, there are some things which aren't changing, like your height or shoe size. However, people learn and unlearn things all of the time. Whatever you got conditioned to as a youngling, it's not set in stone. Therefore, whoever you are and wherever you are, you can turn yourself into a high-value individual. I believe in it 100% and so should you. I'm going to tell you how high-value men talk to women and why they're so successful at it. It's no rocket science, just stick till the end so you don't miss any crucial point, a point which might just change everything for you. Without any further ado, let's get into it. Firstly, don't aim to impress women. Do you ever wonder or whine about how it's so easy for some men to get kitty? Or maybe how easily women get into them in general? It probably annoys you how it's so easy and effortless for some, while you have to go through hell and back. Well, brothers, that's exactly what you're doing wrong. You don't get women by putting more effort in. That just makes you come off as needy and desperate. What you should be striving for yourself is to get women effortlessly. If that's not happening, you might be lacking in some other sectors, which you need to fix first. Once you do so, you'll be attracting girls with ease too. If women aren't into you because you lack confidence and appear insecure, fix that problem. Put your women pursuit folder aside and work out why it is you lack confidence in who you are. Is it because you think you don't earn enough money? Is it because you think you sound dumb when you talk? Is it because you think your body is funny right now? Identify the reason, and I promise you there is always a reason why you feel a certain way. Identify it, and work on eradicating that first. Almost all of the time, you'll notice a boost in your self-esteem when you block those leaks. Second, burn and throw out those quote-unquote tried and tested pickup line books. How can I say it most directly? Let me put it this way. Pickup lines do not work. They're an all-right form of cheesy humor. They fulfill that purpose of theirs perfectly. However, use them to score, or even just impress a woman, and you'll realize you're only making a fool of yourself. The thing is, pickup lines not only turn most women off, but it makes you look desperate. It screams, I'm trying to impress you. Please accept this desperate plea. If you're not getting much action with women, I can guarantee with about 99.9% .9 accuracy that it's not your weak pickup line game holding you back. Understand this. If you envision yourself as a high-value man, you've got to act like one. And high-value men attract high-class women by just being themselves. They don't need any sort of trick to impress any chick. The point comes back to this again. Focus on yourself so that your existence becomes attractive. Third, just don't talk a lot. Now I know what you're thinking, hey, if I don't talk, she'll just glance right over me. Well, hear me out completely first. I'm saying don't talk a lot about yourself. Now I know what you're thinking again. But, but, if I don't talk about myself, how will she know about my really cool Pokemon card collection? You know how she'll know. When she comes over to sleep with you and sees it first thing the next morning on your nightstand, that's how she can know. You should stop trying to tell instead of simply showing. The point is, it's a high value trait to let the other person talk more than you. Because keep this in mind, every time you're saying something, you're doing absolutely nothing for your own intellect. It's only when you're hearing someone else can you learn things, not just about what they're telling you, but even about human nature and all that. Every time you're listening, you're gaining more clarity about the world we're in. And that's not it. The book, How to Influence People and Make Friends, talks about how, contrary to conventional wisdom, influential people are those who have the ability to listen diligently and let others talk. You may wonder, how can you influence somebody if they're the ones doing the talking? Well, brothers, it's really not even about talking. 
I'm sure we all have an idea of how everyone loves to talk about themselves. What constitutes as a quote-unquote good conversation for a common person is how much they got to talk about themselves during it. They'll think it was an incredible conversation, even though it might have just been them blabbering on and on. The point isn't that you start entertaining everybody's lame stories all the time. However, you must use this knowledge to your benefit when you're trying to build rapport with that special somebody. And it could be someone you want to strike a business deal with, or a girl you want to get attracted to you. You want to let them blabber on and on purposefully. Be genuinely interested in the stories they're telling. Display signs of active listening and make them feel as if you both are resonating on a higher frequency. When you go to strike a business deal but end up talking about your client's little boy whose picture he has framed in his office, you'll significantly increase your chances of landing the offer. Amongst all the dull, boring offers he may have had, he'll remember the conversation he had with you and go like, You know what? A good business relationship is more important than slightly better figures. I'll go with that bloke that just seemed to understand what I'm all about. You want to protect yourself from that outcome, and you do that by doing two things. Firstly, not always being present. You have to give her some time and attention, give her a little taste of what it's like being with you, and then observe some distance. Give her the time to think about you and miss the chemistry you both have. That chemistry, mind you, she simply believes exists because it was her talking about herself the entire time. Second, you must understand the importance of flirting and use it to your advantage. I know many guys who think they can make friendship their way into a romantic relationship, but let me pop that bubble for you real quick. That's very rarely the case. Once she sees you as a friend, or worse, her bro, it's game over. Pack your bags and get to finding your next reside. And with that, I conclude today's video. Make sure you support the channel down below by dropping a like and subscribing for more future content. You can leave any thoughts or experiences down in the comments below. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you in the next one. Stay blessed.